material improvement is actually, funnily enough, seen as colonization. So giving people mainstream advice, packaging that as, as, as uh, cultural renewal, that's decolonization. And actually improving people's material situation is sometimes actually considered a form of colonization. So it's like expressly that you should not try to improve people's material position. It's crazy. Um, but the focus on strength, on emotional well-being, may be a kind of deep colonization or colonialism hidden within supposedly progressive discourse. Deep colonization. It is still colonization, but it's packaged as freedom from colonization. But it's deeper, it goes even deeper because it sounds so good. And it's in this language that gets people on side. It's your culture. We respect your culture, the sacred space of motherhood. And it's, it's an even deeper level of colonization. Um, or we could use the concept of kindly power. This is how power operates now. Not through the fist that beats you, but through kindness that brings you on side. Um, a kindly power is a form of power specific to the Chinese context, um, but it shares many commonalities with the way that therapeutic governance is enacted here. Through translating psychologized state goals into caring, culturally relevant language intended to bring you on side. And the rise of trauma narrative positions all indigenous people as traumatized and ill by definition. Even though the rise of a strengths-based approach further entrenches the idea that well-being is not something people just have. Something, it's something that must be inculcated from outside. And therefore, there's an invitation to even greater intervention into family life. An increased intervention is even demanded as a progressive thing, even though it is expressly what people did not want. They did not want intervention. A, a greater intervention to uh, inculcate strengths and well-being is demanded as a progressive thing now. And the result has been, I think, large numbers of child removals. Because we've lowered the bar, we problematize everybody. Everybody's traumatized. Everybody's missing their culture. Um, and the continued deferral of economic questions and questions of self-determination to the mythic day when Indigenous people will be better enabled to enact an appropriate level of self-care. And it represents a cautionary tale. Because this is not just how we treat Indigenous people. It's also how we treat the poor here. As being traumatized, unable to raise their children. And is it any surprise that it's their children who are under most surveillance and are more likely to be taken away from their families?